Uh, in my lifetime, I've never been in one room with so many luminaries. Uh, these are people that, that have laid the groundwork uh, that we've built on and, and uh, some of the analytical methods, for instance, we're still using today. Um, I, I think it's, it's one thing to be recognized in the New York Times as, you know, so-and-so so -and -so is a, a good chemist. But it's quite another to be recognized by your own society as the best of the best, the uh, people who have contributed the most. I'm sure there are other legends in these, besides these 15 people, but I, I truly believe these 15 people would be on anybody's list of legends. Again, welcome. I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Susan Richardson. Uh, Susan is a research uh, uh, chemist at EPA in Athens, Georgia, and we organized this symposium together. Um, Susan is becoming more and more recognized as a, a person very knowledgeable in disinfection of water. Everybody knows you can disinfect water with chlorine, but you can disinfect it with an awful lot of other things, any of the halogens or, or um, ozone or oxygen or other compounds too. And Susan is well versed in uh, some of the deleterious sidelines that are side compounds that are formed and uh, has helped many people. Um, I was at a news conference yesterday about uh, this, this symposium, uh, Sherwood Rowland and I were there. And I was asked uh, by one of the people, do I see anybody in the uh, offing in the, in the hinterlands who are going to follow in the footsteps of these legends? And it didn't take me long to uh, think of anybody, and I thought of Susan. Um, at the spring meeting of the American Chemical Society last March in New Orleans, Susan was awarded a prestigious uh, award by the American Chemical Society, the Award for Innovative Chemistry. And as I look over the list of speakers, several of them have won the same award. So I think Susan has an excellent chance of following in the footsteps of those people. Um, so uh, Susan is going to talk to us a little bit about some of the legends that have gone on. And uh, Susan is my colleague and my friend and my sister in Christ. So I want to take just a moment to honor a few legends who are no longer with us. People, legends without their vision and their brilliant minds, I'm sure we wouldn't be where we are today, that we wouldn't know as much as we know in the area of environmental chemistry. And as Vic said, there are many past legends that we could honor today, but we've chosen three very special ones, and I think you'll agree that they're special ones to represent those legends who are no longer with us. Um, and the first one we want to honor today, and so we're going to dedicate the symposium to the memory of these three amazing environmental chemists. First one is Joe Breen. Do you have that first one? Oh, it's here. Thank you. This one? Okay, great. And many of you probably knew Joe personally, and in fact, it's in his memory that the ACS Award for Creative Advances in Environmental Chemistry, or Environmental Science and Technology, sorry, is given each year. And of his many accomplishments, Joe is known as the heart and soul of green chemistry. And green chemistry, of course, encourages environmentally friendly um, chemical processes and synthesis. And Joe helped to found the Green Chemistry Institute. Joe's also known for his passion for turning young people onto science and helped to found the Kids in Chemistry program. So Joe's the first one we want to acknowledge and honor. And the next past legend, we'd like to honor is Ken Hancock, and I wish I had a picture of him. I wasn't able to get a picture of Ken, unfortunately. But Ken also has an ACS award that bears his name, the Kenneth G. Hancock Memorial Award in Green Chemistry, which honors outstanding student contributions for furthering the goals of green chemistry through research or education. And like Joe Breen, Ken Hancock was one of the early pioneers in green chemistry, Ken served as director of the chemistry division of the National Science Foundation for many years and developed the Environmentally Benign Chemical Synthesis and Processing Initiative, which has been helping to fund green chemistry research for more than 10 years. Ken unexpectedly died in 1993, and if he were still here, I think he'd be amazed. I think he'd be amazed at how successful the green chemistry movement has been 
and how it's been successful in reducing our exposure to hazardous chemicals. The final legend, past legend, that I'd like to honor today is Sam Karakoff. Probably many of you knew him personally. Um, in fact, Sam was my mentor at the EPA in Athens, Georgia for several years until he retired about five years ago and unexpectedly died in a tragic accident last summer. Sam, without a doubt, is the brightest person I've ever known. Amazing, amazing man. Um, he first made his mark in sorption developed the famous octanol water partitioning coefficient, KOW, sometimes it's called log P. It's amazing, I mean that, that concept, and I remember him telling me that it was very difficult to get that initial paper published. When you have something radically different that's just elegantly simple, seems too good to be true. He had difficult getting this famous paper published, and it's one of these classical citations. You see, just for fun, I went on Web of Science before I came here, and you see it's got more than 1,500 citations. I wonder how many, maybe some other legends in this room actually have that many citations. I know I don't. This is for that one paper, um, 1979 in Water Research. And um, just very groundbreaking, and in fact, so, so KOW's octanol water partition coefficients are so important to know for chemicals to predict their fate and transport in the environment. And in fact, I was just reviewing a, a manuscript for analytical chemistry and saw where they're relating these KOWs also to retention on an LC column, liquid chromatography column. It's interesting, it's just amazing how this concept is used in so many different areas. And Sam developed this from scratch. And of course, it was difficult to publish initially. And now, it's in every environmental textbook that's out there, this octanol water partitioning coefficient. Very, very important. And so I you know, would posture that, that um, or posit that probably Sam would have many more than probably 10,000 citations if anybody knew to even cite it anymore because it's just textbook material now. I think it's just so fantastic. Um, and if, as if that wasn't enough, Sam, for the second part of his career, developed a model called SPARC, an expert system, if you will, called SPARC. And SPARC calculates all kinds of different chemical properties from scratch, just based on the ele electronic properties of a molecule. Calculates Henry's Law constants, of course, KOW, solubility constants, pKa's, in fact, predicts pKa's very accurately even when there are multiple sites of ionization in a single molecule. There's no other model that will do that. Amazing. A whole lot of other chemical properties, including hydrolysis, was one of the last things. Hydrolysis rate constants for some classes of chemicals. Um, so that's what he did toward the, toward the end of the second half of his career. And something he tried to instill in me, tried to teach me and other scientists, younger scientists at my lab, was to, to have a chemical empathy, he called it. To try to put your mind in the mind of the chemical, what that chemical is experiencing. And that's how he developed the spark model. He just had this real sense of chemical empathy. Um, and the only person I've ever known to be able to do that. Um, and I wish Sam were here today to be able to give his vision and speak to us today. Very tragic that he's gone. But it's in the honor of these three amazing chemists that we want to dedicate the symposium to. Without their pioneering work, we would not be where we are today. I want to take one final moment. Um, Vic doesn't know I'm doing this. He embarrassed me, so I can embarrass him too. Um, I, want to, I want to honor him. Of course, he's a legend who is still with us over here at the podium at the table. Um, Vic, a few years ago, uh, called me up on the phone and said, what do you think if we did a, a symposium on legends of environmental chemistry? What do you think? Is that a crazy idea? Could we do this? We want to hear their stories, to hear their struggles, to hear how they were inspired to do the work they were, and to be able to meet with them and talk with them. And um, of course, it was a fantastic idea. And here we are, maybe five or six years later, after a lot of hard work on Vic's, Vic's part. He's just a real visionary in this. And I just want to honor him and acknowledge him for allowing this symposium to take place, for having the idea for this. What, what a wonderful opportunity we all have to meet with these legends. So I would encourage you at the breaks, at lunch, Go up and talk to some of these legends. We have the reception tomorrow evening at the Chemical Heritage Foundation. There's still tickets available. I'd just encourage you to come and meet some of the legends that are here in this room today. So thank you, Vic, for your vision in doing this.